All right, I'm here. I'm in a really uncomfortable chair and I'm gonna be really crazy about it the whole time. Hi everybody, how you doing? I think we probably have a pretty good group of people here already, so I don't want to um, keep people waiting too long, but we, we start a little bit early and then kind of, you know, ease into it so that um, all those people that are knowing to, you know, hop on at 5.15 know that uh, we're ready to go. So if you don't know me, I'm Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique, and I have a store in beautiful British Columbia, Canada, and uh, I'm about an hour uh, east of Vancouver. So I was actually in Vancouver yesterday. I don't get in there very often, but uh, so I just live in a little town and we have a huge store here and we don't have a whole lot of uh, bead stores in the lower mainland. That's what we call the Vancouver area, um, but I'm one of them. So and I'm so thankful that you've all showed up today. Has everybody had a good time? It's been a full day of all kinds of really great um, presentations. Oh my gosh, just so many talented people. It's amazing, right? Has everybody been making along or just kind of like soaking it in and trying to figure out what they're going to do? <laughs> I know I my creative juices start going like crazy when I start watching everybody. I'm like, oh gosh, that's cool. I could do that and I could try this and lots of fun. Okay, so um, make sure that you stick around to the end because I'm going to have um, some giveaways. And if I forget the giveaways, can you guys please remind me? I'm a little scattered today. And <laughs> um, and also I'm gonna have a coupon code. And so I will show that all at the end. And I've got a few um, new stones that maybe I'll show if I don't, you know, if I have time, because I never know how long everything's gonna take. So, oh good, I'm glad you've been having a good time. Everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. I can't believe the amount of people that watch the, all, this, all the videos or presentations or whatever. Um, gosh, so many people just um, joining in. I think it's really fabulous. So we all appreciate you so much. And I want to thank again, um, the, you know, the leaders of the group, I guess. Um, well, there's just uh, so many people, but um, Sarah and Andrew and, you know, all the others that have done everything they can to make this such a fabulous event. And I just feel really blessed that I get to not only join in, but be the last one of the day. And it is uh, cocktail time. So I have mine. My uh, daughter-in-law to be made me this mug and it says, better grab my umbrella. It's getting really stupid out there today. <laughs> so that's what I'm drinking, my rum and coke. Have you guys all got your favorite beverages? It's cocktail time, right? It's uh, 5.15 here on the West Coast. So I know for some of you it's other times, but it's 5 here. So, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Erin, I guess you are three, three hours ahead. Almost bedtime? Goodness, girl, what time do you go to bed? <laughs> I go to bed early too. All right. So we are going to make sort of an, uh, an oldie but a goodie. Um, I came up with this bracelet, I don't know. 10 years ago maybe I think yeah a very very long time ago and I've made it over and over and over again and I've actually done a video on it before um, but I'm gonna show you a couple of little things um, some little sort of uh, what am I trying to say some things to make it easier um, that I didn't do in my other video and um, so I'm going to do some things for sizing and that kind of stuff so I think it'll you'll probably enjoy it so now I do want to make a recommendation first of all I want to say thank you to all the people that uh, pre-bought the kits but I do want to make a recommendation I know that everybody's really keen and really 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 wants to make um, their kit however because I am going to show you some other um, another option that you can um, do with your kit um, it won't have everything that you need but anyway it's gonna be an option you might want to just hold on I, this will be you can replay this again and I am going to post it on my YouTube page probably tomorrow and um, so you may want to hold off on making yours along with mine so that you can really get an idea for sizing or just for the style that you want to make if you want to go ahead and make yours then you just carry on um, and, and make yours do whatever you want to do um, it just might be a good idea to kind of hold back if you, if you want um, and, you know it's, it's it's up to you it's whatever you guys want to do so I just thought I'd throw that up there so yeah I'm all about the tips and tricks Marika 
that you know anything that you can to make it a little bit easier because um, I know like uh, Kate said this morning in, in her uh, presentation that she's been making jewelry for 30 years and she makes it look easy I'm, I'm on 18 years now and I make it look easy because when you do it all the time it does look easy and um, so I I actually had a guy leave a really rude comment the other day on my one of my videos and he said that I wasn't all that and that and I'm like well I've never said that I was and he said that my uh, projects were actually very beginner and nothing very special and I was like well first of all you're rude um, but also I think that um, my whole thing with my YouTube channel and even with these sort of presentations is that jewelry is easy to make it's just knowing what to do so I've never said that I am like you know the queen well I do about barrel knots because you know I have that crown um, but <laughs> I, I've never said that I am like the, the expert at everything I just say that I'm going to teach you how to make things in an easier way um, so that it's just you know I'm going to show you how easy it is and that's what I say in, at the beginning of a lot of my videos is that it's really easy because it is and I don't I know how to do like silversmithing and all kinds of stuff but I don't show you how to do that stuff because most people don't want to do that because they don't want to have to buy all the tools and all that whatnot so anyway so that rude man can and I actually gave it to him usually I just delete and just kind of carry on but I actually just kind of bit him back a little bit because I was like you're a jerk and I'm just I don't need to take that so <laughs> Yeah, you know, the trolls are out there all over the place. You have to have a thick skin to do this kind of thing because, um, you know, you just do. And on that note, um, you may have noticed I put up a post that said that uh, there was no video last week and that my um, future videos may be po um, postponed for a little bit. I'm going through some treatment um, for um, skin cancer right now. Um, it's Don't panic, it's nothing bad, um, but it's making a mess of my skin and my hands like you guys often comment on these well now they're even more pronounced and I'm really super super self-conscious they look awful and it's going to get worse in about uh, two weeks I'm going to look like I've been dragged through uh, a gravel pit or something my the, the doctor said it's not going to be fun so I may not do videos because people can be so mean online so please be kind today don't say mean things to my hand about my hands I can't help it um, and I've covered my arms up as best I can it's I'm so self-conscious it's awful I know there's nothing that I can do about it um, anyway I just thought I would mention it because somebody usually will say oh goodness you better look at your hands well I am actually now we're um, I'm on a form of chemotherapy for three weeks and um, I'm eight days in and um, yeah, it's been hard. I'm not feeling so great, but you know, it is what it is and I'll, I'll feel better. So there you go. So that's what's going on with me. And I think that's about everything. So should we get started with the project? So yeah, I know Carrie, sometimes people can just be mean, but um, you know, whatever. I guess they, they have to make comments and then live with those stupid comments, right? You know, um, oh, did you Karen? Oh my gosh, well, I hope yours are gonna be okay. Yeah, it's not it's not fun, uh, but at least there is a treatment. Um, so before it goes any further, so yes, Linda, right, six and stone. So okay, so I have to take the you guys out of this holder and put you into the other one because I don't have all these high tech tools like the other girls and guys. So um, we're going to have to um, you know jostle you around a little bit. So I'm going to pull you out of here and put you in the other one and let's hope for the best. So and and if, and if for some reason I lose you part way come back because I will be here okay so um, all right let's pull you out of here oh goodness this is always very scary and now I'm gonna go that way and let's hope that this works I think we're good Whew, nerve-wracking all right need to get the microphone and all this stuff that's hanging off of here and how are we looking there? All right, I think I need to adjust a little bit. I just have to move some things. I was playing with it like crazy. So now I can't really see people's comments very easily. Um, I'm going to try to look at them, but um, you know, things don't always work. Okay, I think we're in a good position. All right. Oh, Jane, I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought I was going to be that person too because I was not feeling very well last week. But I'm feeling better. 
Um, started to loosen some hair today, which is not good. My hair came out in big chunks today when I was in the shower. So <laughs> that did not make me happy, but you know, that's life. I'm just going to move this camera or this phone back a little bit because it's, I'm tipping a bit. Well, hopefully, are we crooked or are you guys looking okay? I guess that's okay. All right. So for this project today, we have, <laughs> I don't think I even have my notice of how much we've got here. I think I have a meter of 1.5 millimeter leather. You could use um, two millimeter leather if you had it, but um, I wouldn't use one millimeter. It's not gonna be quite wide enough. So you want about a meter or so of that. And then I have two meters of three ply Irish wax linen. Now people always ask me, well, can I use something else other than Irish wax linen? Um, and I don't know. I've never, I've never done it before. I always use Irish wax linen um, for these kind of projects because I like the, <laughs> I make up a word, I like the gription. <laughs> I, um, I just really like the way that it sticks to things and, and, and it holds. So you probably could use Ceylon or Eslon um, in, if you didn't have any, um, although we do sell all, everything here, we sell a kit for this and there's four different colorways and I'll show you three of them anyway. Um, but um, anyway, so you can use other things, but I like to use the Irish wax linen. And of course, we cannot do a project by Kelly if we don't have a barrel knot tube, right? So um, I'm going to be doing that. And um, also, I've got a little button. Now, in the kit, you will get this one that has the little um, tree of life on there. Now, I do have to say that um, right now, um, tier, this is a tear cast button because, you know, I love tear cast. Um, a lot of a lot of things are getting uh, back ordered. I guess there's it, it just all of a sudden is hit, and I'm having a hard time getting some supplies. So you may end up with a different uh, button, um, but we would try to you know make it as nice as possible, and it would be a small tear cast one like this. But we've got a, a lot for the time being, so we hopefully we'll be okay. And I have seven inches of three millimeter crystal chiton chain. I call it bling chain. And that's why this piece is actually called Urban Bling. That was what I, um, oh, thanks, Tracy. <laughs> I, it's it's so hard because I, you know, I, I buy you guys out of everything. I'm, I'm kind of greedy. I, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'll take all of that. <laughs> Click. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've got seven inches. And now depending on the size of your wrist, you may not need all seven inches, but that's what we're going to be using today. And we're going to need a small amount of size eight, uh, my Yuki seed beads. I tend to stick with my Yuki because they're all very uniform and have a nice whole size in there. Um, if you don't have my Yuki and you have something else, you can always try that too, but you just may not have the exact same look. Um, the other thing that we're going to be using um, just to kind of secure things is um, a bead tray. Uh, if you don't have one of these trays, you can actually use the a lid off of a, a shoebox or you can use um, a macrame board or whatever you have to secure your piece. You know, like a lot of people tape things down. So whatever way you like to do it, there, there's never a right or a wrong. It's just the way that I do it. And I like to use a bullnose clip. And we're going to be using a little bit of GS Hypo and um, probably some painter's tape. So let's get started on this. I think we've got things that we shouldn't in there. Okay, I'll try and get this all organized. So is everybody jewelried out or is everybody still raring to go? <laughs> it's a long day. Even for me, I'm watching everybody going, oh my goodness, this is a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of stuff to watch. Oh, cookie sheets. That's a good idea. Julie, I do carry them, but they're horrible to ship because they're plastic and they break. So I don't ship them out. Um, a Frisbee with a bead mat in it. Hey, Mary, there you go. That would work too. So pretty much anything that's got a bit of a lip on it, that's all you need it for is just something to, you know, um, just to have a little bit of an edge on there. So I just wanna make sure I'm completely on camera here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to take my leather and I am going to put it through the shank of the button. Now, normally what I do is I will bring it down so that it's, I'm meeting the two ends. I married them up like that so that we're at the halfway point. But this time what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull that off so that I've got about a third, maybe around a third of it. So you wanna make sure that it's gonna go around your wrist. So of course I don't have any measuring tool here, whatever, but I'm just going to, um, you know, 
I'm just going to wing it. So I'm going to go about a third. Oh, I just have to click something off of here so I can see that. There we go. Um, a third of my leather is going to be on the bottom and then two thirds of the leather is going to be on the top. And the one on the top is the one that we're going to make our barrel knots with because that's what takes up all of the uh, leather is the barrel knots. Okay. So if you're getting yours ready or if you're going to make yours later, make sure that you pull it off a little bit so you can kind of see it's maybe it's enough to go around your wrist or maybe about as wide as my tray um, is the shorter piece. Okay, so now you're always going to be working with the top one, which is your long one. Do not use the bottom one or else you're going to run out of um, room. Okay, so we are going to make a barrel knot. So I'm going to take my little tube and the most asked question of the day is always, well, where do you get that little tube? Well, we sell them. Um, if you order any of our kits that require barrel knot tubes, we always um, give you one of those. So um, some people that order kits all the time probably have a million of them. <laughs> but we do um, give you that. Sorry, I just have to click this off again here. Can't get that out. Okay, and um, yeah, oh, so and if you wanted to buy one by itself on our website, uh, you just go up to the search bar and type in barrel knot tube and it'll take you directly to that page, okay? Okay, so I'm going to take my barrel knot tube and place it in between the leather and I'm going to use my top one here. So I'm going to take it and bring it underneath and work away from me. So I'm going to go around once, twice, three times. And you can see that I'm working nice and neatly towards my left hand. And now I'm going to take the, that big long tail and I'm going to come through the back part of the tube. And then you can see it coming out there. So now I'm going to hold on. You still want to hold on to that knot because if you let go of it, you're going to end up with a knot that falls apart. So you're going to pull that out. And then I'm going to sort of pull that so that it tightens it up a little bit. But before I do that, I want to see where I need to move it down. So of course you don't want to have it there. So I'm just going to push that down. So it's about a quarter of an inch away or so. And then I'm going to tighten it up. And you're going to tighten it up with the one that you were wrapping with, so the long one. So I just find the best way to um, do that is just kind of take your thumbnail and push against it and gently pull and push. You don't want to just give it a big reef because you're going to end up with a, a mess on your barrel knots or you could break your leather. So that's what we've got so far, okay? So you've got your one little barrel knot in there. How's everybody doing? I need to have a short slurp. Barrel knots are just practice, practice, Lois, that's all. Okay, so the way that I do this, now everybody has a different method of doing it, of course, but the way that I do it is I take one of these bullnose clips and I just kind of open it up like that and I pop the button through it and then pull it up so that it's in that little thing there. And then you kind of have to flip it backwards. Now I'm just going to put it on the end there. And so all we want to do is just secure that. Now I do find this a lot easier uh, to do if I make this taut. So I'm going to use a little bit of um, painter's tape. Do not use regular because if you do use regular tape, you're going to pull the uh, finish off of your leather. So I want to, whoops, well that didn't work. Um, <laughs> I have a different one at home and I hope this is going to work because this is small. Okay, this button. Well, hopefully it'll work. Yeah. Okay, so I just take that and just kind of tape it down. It doesn't need to be super tight. You just It makes it a little bit easier if you've got a little bit of tension there. Okay. Okay, just seeing what you guys are saying. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to add some square knot. So if you're watching Kate this morning, you would have seen her um, do some macrame and we're going to do the exact same thing. So the hardest part of this is getting started. So what I'm doing is I'm folding my um, two meters of iris wax linen in half and I want to find the midsection there. So the midpoint, I'm just going to take it and put it underneath there. And what I do is I kind of grab hold of the um, leather underneath and then I pull one of these on either side. And I'm just very mindful that I'm remaining in the middle of that piece. If if you get too far off, if you end up with like, you know, two and a half meters and then, you know, one and a half on one side, you may run out. So make sure uh, that you're watching your lengths. So the first one is the hardest because you kind of have to hold on there. So I'm going to create my first side of my um, square knot. So I'm going to create my P. And so I just kind of start like that. 
and then I'm going to take this tail and it goes over top and then that tail has to come up through that hole. So I kind of just take it and push it up through there. But you can see that I'm still holding on up top here because I don't want this to um, move all over the place and then end up, like I said, uh, the wrong size. So what I'm going to do is just get it into position and then I'm going to just check to make sure that I'm, yeah, I'm pretty close. I just want to um, have even. So I'm going to bring it right up to that barrel knot there and then give that a little bit, um, I'm just going to pull that tight. All right. So now I'm going to do the other side. So I'm going to do my cue. So I just bend it around and then I take that tail and you always want to go over top of this tail and then go up through the hole. So now this is a full square knot. So I'm going to do two full square knots. So now I'm going to start on this side. Now you can always tell which side you want to start on by the little bump that's here. Now this bump is on the right hand side so I know that I have to start my P again. So go over there, bring that over top and go up through the the hole and tighten that up and you don't want to tighten it so hard uh, or so tight that you distort the leather you don't want to like put a dent in it or anything but you do want to have that nice and taut and so now we've got our cue go over top and pull that up and I'm the last person of the day so if I go late I guess it doesn't really matter except you guys are probably getting tired so <laughs> I was like oh gosh what if I'm not done in time but uh, all right, I'm just kind of looking at um, comments every once in a while. Oh, thanks, Annette. You know, I, I'm not a big macrame person, but I really enjoy doing it. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to put some beads on. Now, if you're wondering how many beads you need to put on, what you need to do is to count how many um, pieces of bling chain you have. So I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38. So I'm going to put 38 beads on each side because I think it's the same um, even amounts. I never really count things. I just kind of do them. So when I'm trying to put this on already, it's causing me grief because it's uh, got a blunt cut on there. So just roll it around until um, you get what you want. So of course now I can't talk and count. So I'm going to just throw a whack of beads on here while I'm yapping to you guys. And so you're going to put those on both sides. So it's so, something that I wish that I could have pre-done, but I can throw these on here pretty fast. So what else is everybody saying? Oh good Kimberly, I'm, I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying all this. Everybody works really hard to make sure that um, these presentations are are just you know tickety boo and and getting all kinds of fun projects and um, um, Abby is on after me tomorrow uh, well not after me she's on tomorrow although she's the first up and she's got a fun project tomorrow everybody's had some really cool projects and I love the mixed media I loved Candy's um, uh, things that she showed about um, her earring cards it's such a unique way of uh, making your jewelry look fabulous if you didn't get an opportunity to watch Candy, make sure you can go back and watch hers at the end, um, especially, I mean, watch the whole thing, of course, but at the end where she does her earring card um, demo, I thought that was really cool. I mean, she's just so uber creative. Um, and I aspire to be like her when I grow up. <laughs> I don't think I ever grow up, but whatever. Hey, Lynn, great last name. Where's your, is, I guess that's your husband's last name, right? Sutton is my maiden name, so. Oh, and there's a Joan Sutton too. There's lots of Suttons on here. What's going on? <laughs> hey, Joan. We have lots of Suttons in the house today. Yes, Michelle, she does. She's, I mean, and, and, you know, she is like a true artist. Uh, she really just has the coolest things. Um, I could watch her all day. All right, let me just give a quick count and see how many I've got on here because I've probably got like way too many because I'm yammering. So we got five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and I think I said I need 38, right? 
Okay, so we'll put three more on there because I do want to actually complete this project. I know sometimes it's really hard to complete a project in the time allotted, but I'm gonna just rip it and try to get her done. Okay, so now you wanna take that end and you're just gonna tie a little knot on the end. I don't make it really tight, I just kinda of make a knot. And then we're gonna repeat on the other side. Is the GBE on YouTube or Facebook? Uh, both, I think. Um, some people are putting there, if they have a YouTube channel, I will be posting this on YouTube probably tomorrow, not tonight because I need to go home and spend some time with my sweetheart and drink some more rum. And <laughs> so I probably won't do it tonight, but I will be putting it on um, in place of a, a project this coming up week. I, with everything that's been going on, I have not had any time to come up with any new ideas. Um, so unfortunately, we're going to be a little little lean on the new projects for a bit. But if I'm feeling well, I will throw together even just a quick pair of earrings maybe and do one. Because I know you guys really like it when I um, come out with new projects. And I can always throw together a, a good pair of earrings. So do we have any other rum drinkers in the house? I'm an Appleton's rum girl. And that's always hard when I travel because not very many places carry Appleton's rum. And I only like Appleton's rum and Diet Pepsi. I don't like anything else alcoholic. I don't drink anything else. I'll drink the odd glass of wine, but I have to choke it down. Um, I like bubbly. Um, like we have like, um, there's a yellow tail rosé bubbly that's quite nice, but I can't, you know, I don't drink that very often. So I don't like any other beverages, except my husband, he's a beverage. His last name's Beverage. <laughs> if you haven't heard that joke before, he is actually a, a beverage. Coconut and pineapple rum. Okay, I could probably be down with that. Oh, Captain Morgan. Okay, you and I could be besties. Uh, Diet Coke and a spritz of lemon. Okay, Shelly, bring some over. Um, <laughs> Coca-Cola Rum Company. Oh, okay, that sounds good too. Private select. Oh, I got some rum drinkers in the house. <laughs> oh, you don't get Diet Pepsi there, Lorraine? Well, that's that's weird, and I'm sorry. That sucks. Because Diet Pepsi is my jam. I'm probably the biggest Diet Pepsi addict out there, which is not good. So, not good at all. But, you know, we all have to have a vice, I suppose, right? <laughs> you love the captain? <laughs> I actually want to go to, um, where is um, Appleton's Rum is made on one of the one of the Caribbean islands. I can't remember which one, but I want to go there so that I can get some right from where it comes from. <laughs> I think it would be fun because I would love to, I would love to hear his beverage, my hubby, <laughs> his beverage. Um, He's a vodka drinker and I can't, I don't understand people that drink vodka. It tastes like paint thinner to me. Um, and he likes beer and he likes wine, but he can't drink wine because he has gout. <laughs> you know, the hazards of getting older. Um, you just, sometimes you can't do what you used to do. So uh, he doesn't, he actually doesn't drink very much. Um, I never drank until I was like, about, I don't know, 50, something like that. I did have a couple drinks when I was younger, but I didn't drink very much because I was a mom and all that sort of stuff. But I had a, when I worked for the police force, I had a staff sergeant that was a real, <clears throat> I can't say the word that he was, because um, it's not polite. Um, and I came home one day and I said, I need a drink. And that was it. <laughs> Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Oh, I've got one too many. That's it. Well, that was pretty good with the not counting while I was doing that. That's, I did okay. All right. You guys all know my backstory, right? That I used to work for the police force in the jail. Because <laughs> people often say, what? what? What did you do? Mm, Captain Morgan Spice Rum and Dr. Pepper. I've heard that people like Dr. Pepper with their rum. I I like Dr. Pepper. That would be good. St. Thomas is rum with a splash of Coke. Oh, mm, yum. <laughs> all right. Off from the, the booze and back to the beads. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to carry on doing, so there's going to be lots of chatting in this video because I'm going to just be doing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, so now I want to explain something. 
before you get started, if you are following along with me and making yours. So I figured this out um, in error. <laughs> so I was making these at home because I wanted to have some of the colorways. And this is the beautiful saffron one. Um, uh, this is my favorite with the uh, copper. So I think I only have like 34 or 33 of the little bling chain on there. And by the time I added everything, this fits about a six and a half inch wrist. So um, that's the sizing on about, I think it was it, let me just see if all my notes. So this is, yeah, 36 of these on here will fit about a six and a half to six and three quarter piece or wrist, sorry. But what then I thought was like, I started to panic and thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do for the ladies like me who have big wrists? So what I did was I um, used the same amount of chain on this one, but I added more um, uh, square knots. So instead of just uh, two full square knots, I added four for, uh, full square knots on each side. And then I added um, some more barrel knots and I added a little uh, charm on there. So that extended it out big enough to be able to wear it. So if you're making a long and you have a bigger wrist, you may want to consider this option. You can always add barrel knots on the end to make it longer and nobody's going to know because it's going to be underneath. So you won't see that. But you have to always think about options when you're creating things because it may not work exactly like mine does because it depends on how tight you pull things. And if you pull these really tight together, it shrinks it up. So you have to sort of watch your tension and that sort of stuff. So. Be mindful of the size when you're creating this and I, everybody's going to have a different size so I can't really tell you how, how to do the sizing other than this little bit extra down here. I'll show you on this one here. You end up with about um, an extra three quarters of an inch or so from the end of these barrel knots. So you've got our first barrel knot, the last barrel knot and you've got about an extra three quarters of an inch. So that's sort of how you can figure out your sizing. I would say just go around your wrist. Um, and once you've got like a little little gap like that, that will take up that extra. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Because as it's coming out of my mouth, I'm like, what in the heck am I saying? You guys picking up what I'm throwing down? <laughs> okay. Alrighty, so let's push these beads up there and let's get this show on the road so that I can finish this. Okay. I have a feeling I'm gonna need all the time. Okay, so now what I wanna do is create another square knot. So don't worry about the beads, just let them kinda of hang out. So I'm just gonna do my little P and then take my tail, go over top. And now I wanna take that tail and come up through this hole there. So again, don't worry about anything. I just kinda of hold on to it because we got beads and stuff flying everywhere. Now, just before I tighten that up, I'm gonna take the end of my chain and I'm going to slip it under here. Now, this is the hardest part it goes everywhere and it's a little awkward. So you see I drop it down in between because that makes it a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna kinda of scoosh that up there. And I wanna capture that in that um, square knot up there. So you kinda of have to be able to, you know, do two things at one time. But I just wanna center that in there and then pull that tight. So now it's stuck in there. So now I'm going to create the other side of my barrel knot. Hang on for one second while I look at what I did. <laughs> I think actually what I needed to do was, or do I have to pull up my bead? You know, I honestly can't remember what I did. Isn't that terrible? I sometimes I'm like, what did I do? Oh goodness, I guess I should have practiced a little bit more. I go to make these things and then I forget what I'm doing because it's been a while since I've made one. Okay, I think I'm going to pull up a bead on each side. And I'm really sorry. I am not at my best today. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to finish the other side of this. So I'm going to do my cue, and I want to do it in the same spot there, okay? So I'm just going to bring that tail over, and then make sure that you go underneath that chain and pull it up. So I hope I didn't confuse everybody there, because I'm a little a little spazzed right now. Okay, get that first one in there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is now we're going to pull our beads up. So I'm going to pull up one bead on either side. Okay, yeah, maybe I do need some more rum there, Deborah. <laughs> pull one up on either side. 
Okay, and now we're just going to continue that same process. So I'm going to start my barrel, or not a barrel knot, good Lord, Kelly. Um, I'm going to do my uh, square knot. So I want to put that in between the next two that are there. So bring the tail over and then bring it up through the hole. Now you want to make sure that you're always going underneath that chain and the chain can kind of get in the way. So I don't worry about getting it right in between the two pieces of chain. I start my square knot and then I pop it in between the chain like that. And then I center those two beads on either side and then pull it tight. Okay. So now I'm going to take my piece there and do my Q. So again, it doesn't matter if it goes into that hole, we can just move it up there. So bring it up. And I just tend to do these in my hand. I find it a little bit easier um, than, okay, did that one get caught? So you have to watch where your chain is. So I think my chain might be caught in there. So the, the chain can be a little bothersome. Um, because it's, you know, it's it's pokey, right? So just kind of have to make sure that it's in the right place. So sometimes you have to pull it out. You know, and when I do this at home, okay, this is not a, a green with me today. Um, when I do this at home, it is way easier, but of course, when you're doing it on camera, it is just not cooperating whatsoever. Okay, let me take that apart. So see? It happens to me too. Okay, let's try this again. I do find it easier if I put that down there. So if it's really bothering you, you can take your chain and run a little piece of tape down at the end here. This is what I used to do in my when I was teaching in classes, is I would take the chain and I would just do that with it. Just kind of tape it down so that it was um, laying on top but I'm not having any luck with any of this stuff today. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so let's try this again. So I think I need to do the other side, right? So I'm going to bring that across and <laughs> bring this tail over and then go up inside. <laughs> goodness gracious. Okay, we'll get this going. There we go. Okay, so that's one completed section. So you can see in this first one, I probably could have put some beads in there too, but so you can kind of do whatever you like. You know, you can put your beads wherever you want. Okay, so now you can't really attach your chain at the end. It just doesn't work. Like you have to kind of do it as you go along. So, okay, so I'm gonna bring up a bead on each side. And I'm trying to read comments and do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do another set of square knots. So I'm gonna do, can I do this fast? Do you guys care? If, you know how to do these, right? Just bring your tail over, bring it up through the loop. So I don't wanna repeat that, you know, 38 times because you guys will get really bored with that. So now the other thing is you wanna make sure that the beads are up here. Sometimes when you pull this down, the bead will do this. It will come on the other side and you don't want that. So you wanna make sure that the beads are up here. So I just kind of tighten it up and then I center them so that they're in there nicely. So, bamboo rum. You know what, somebody else told me that the other day. I think my girlfriend was saying that her husband drinks bamboo and I, I think I looked at it at the um, liquor store. But okay, so is it a spiced kind of rum or, or what is it? Um, Barbara, it's um, 1.5 millimeter leather. So if you have some leather at home and the um, bling chain, it's really easy to make. Did I do the other side there, people? I'm so busy yapping. Yeah, I did, okay. All right, so always pull your beads up before you start, and then we're just gonna do our square knot in between each of the blings here, so. Okay, so there you can see that how that one went underneath. So what I do is I just take it and just pop it back up. You just always wanna make sure that that is um, in the right position or it, it just you'll notice right away it'll just look off oh it tastes like caramel mm, okay well I'm down with that I might have to pick some up okay so I'm just going to be repeating this over and over 
Um, I am pulling the cord taut. I'm not pulling it super tight because if you pull it too tight, it will shrink this up in here and we don't want to shrink up our chain too much. So you just want to pull, um, you know, taut. Is that, is that better than, I'm not like reefing on it. I'm just pulling it so that it's sort of, you know, keeping everything in there. But like, I don't want to leave it like that. I want to pull it, you know, like I am pulling probably harder than what it looks on camera. Um, but I don't ever pull my macrame too tight because it can actually wreck your um, leather. So you just keep positioning this back. And see now that I've got this chain out of the way, even though it, you know, it's not in there very well, um, it has made life a little bit easier. So there's a little tip for you on how to um, you know, wrangle that stupid chain. <laughs> Janine, you're in with that too? How many yards of wax linen? Uh, two meters of, um, this is three ply. You could maybe use four ply, but it, it might it might push things a little differently. I mean, I, I don't know, I haven't used four ply. Um, I know somebody that ordered a kit. Um, well, when we first started putting the kits together, I didn't, I wasn't clear enough with my um, staff in the, in the back here about the size of the um, iris wax linen. So they sent out four ply and I'm like, oh my gosh, no. So they had to quickly send out three ply to a few people before we went any further. So, um, I mean, you can always try other things. People always ask me, can you do this? Can you do that? I don't always have the answer for all those things, but you can always try. And if it doesn't work, then you just take it apart. That's the nice thing about making your own jewelry, right? You just take things apart if they don't work. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue this along. And, uh, oh my gosh, I only have 15 more minutes. Am I gonna be able to get this done in 15 minutes? Oh goodness. Are you guys wanting to hang around longer if I take too long? <laughs> All right, I have to get rid of that. Sorry. Oh, I try. I'm pretty good at multitasking, but um, I think that comes from my days of working in the jail. I had to sometimes do a million things at one time. So the only problem with this Irish wax linen is when it goes awry, it's really hard to figure out what it's doing. See, that chain is not sticking on there. Oh, okay, back to my, when it goes, because it's really sticky and it will, and we've got beads on it and you know, just, it can, this can be challenging. It's not a hard bracelet to make at all. This is super, super simple. It's just when I'm doing it on camera and you know, and I never work in the position that I'm working at, I always tip this towards me. Like I'm, you know, kind of like I'm reading a book. I find it much easier to do it that way, um, but it doesn't work on camera. So I'm not really in the sort of the best position to do this right now. It's kind of weird, but. Oh yeah, so um, yeah, the giveaways are going to be at the end, but I should, I could probably do that right now. So um, I can blah, blah and do this. So um, I'll pop this on here. Can you guys, let's see, I'm gonna fold this in half. I don't want you to go away though. You gotta stay here. Um, so I brought up my beads. You always wanna make sure you bring up your beads. So I'll see if you can see that thing. I'm not sure. But I've got a coupon code. So just in case we run out of some time, I wanna make sure that you um, can see what we have. Oh no, it's not gonna show. I'll have to just tell you and then I'll, I'll put it out later on. Um, so I've got a 20% off coupon code and all you do is just fill up your cart with whatever you want and you type in the word in all capitals, spring fling and you'll get 20% off. Now, unfortunately, the um, it's not valid on kits or tools. Um, I try to keep my kits really reasonably priced. I know some people will um, say that I don't, but um, we do. I We don't charge much extra for them, um, and so I just can't afford to, um, to do a discount on them too often. So we've got that coupon, and then what I'm gonna do for a giveaway, kind of something a little different than I did last time, so uh, I'm going to be giving away two $25, it won't be gift certificates, it'll be sort of like a, like a coupon to my store, um, my online store. And so there'll be two $25 um, coupons. 
And the way that you win is just by placing an order. And if you've already placed an order uh, for your for the great bead extravaganza uh, bracelet, um, I can actually track it and see who did. Your name will go in there too. So what you want to do is if you place an order between now and um, March 22nd, so I'm going to keep this open for Saturday, Sunday, Monday night. Um, the coupon will, will run to then. So if you place an order between now and then, you uh, just have to write in the comments, just put GBE, and then we will add your name to the list of people that are eligible, and you can win a $25 um, coupon or whatever I'll call it to my website so you can shop for some things that you want instead of me just doing like a a grab bag like I did last time although that grab bag was pretty darn nice um, I added a whole pile of stuff to it so how are we doing for time six o'clock well I may end up running a little late here but I don't think that uh, I'll get in trouble I'll just have to ask for forgiveness instead of permission right Yes, I am going to put this on my YouTube channel. I will do that tomorrow when I am of sound mind. And <laughs> I will um I will get that done. So now when I'm when I'm not trying to do 10 things at one time, I can usually crank these out pretty fast. But um I guess I was being all you know, overconfident and with my time. And uh, I just want to make sure that you'll be able to see the end on how to do this. So I'm going to try and Hall butt, but I don't know how I'm going to do this, so we'll see. So, yeah, Patty, you won it, didn't you? I think, yeah, I think Patty Graham won it last time, and yeah, it, there was. Did you think it was? You had some good stuff in there. I thought it was uh, pretty fun. I love giving things away. So, yeah, want <laughs> well, sometimes that's just what you have to do, right? Just ask for forgiveness. So, I mean, before we used to do an hour and a half, um, and that was that was kind of a nice amount of time, but uh, it just meant that you guys were here for so much longer. This chain is just not cooperating with me at all today. All right. So the, the main thing to remember is when you're doing this, that you are pulling your beads up as you're doing it each time and that you're locking that chain in there and that you're doing a full set of square knots in between the the bling chain so you do one with your beads you pull your beads up and you do one and then you just do a blank one sort of in there in between so the first the first one you're always pulling the beads up and the second one you don't pull up any beads up so that's sort of my quick tip this bracelet kit um I don't know. I want to say, is it $15.99 or $17.99? I honestly, I don't know. I can't remember. And I should know that, right? Does the rhinestone chain lay, lay on the top of the two leather strands? It's on the top. So you can see um, there's a finished one. So it lays on the top there. So it's um, it's really pretty on. This is a really great bracelet for layering. It looks really, really pretty on um, layered up. $15.99, there you go. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate that. Um, you guys are my Vanna's for the day. So, so I'm resting the chain on, on the top of the leather, yes. Yeah. So I've just kind of got it dangling here for demonstration purposes, but it is just sitting right on top of those two pieces of leather. And then I've just got the beads on either side. So I do recommend uh, going back and rewatching this just to make sure that um, you know what you're doing. Um, it is kind of hard when I'm, we're doing these demos so darn fast. Um, and like I do have this uh, in a YouTube video already. I just don't have the um, with the with this the way that I made that one. I don't have that on there, and I. I did that one a couple years ago, so I change things all the time, right? But this was one of my favorite bracelets. I, I'm not the originator of it. I do, th I do think that it was. Um, I think. Well, I did. I, I did my own spin on it, but I think one of the originators used to own a a store, Cynthia. 
in um, Raleigh, North Carolina. I believe she used to have a, um, a bead store called Ornamentia. And she made something like this. And then I just um, did my own thing with barrel knots and kind of made it look a little different. But um, I believe that it was hers years ago. Okay, see how cute that's looking? So this one is the um, the green, the olivine uh, Picasso. If you're wondering, I've got four different Picasso colors um, for sale. And so this one is the olivine. Oh, I got 10 minutes more. Um, yes, yeah, so that is in Canadian dollars. So that, thank you for bringing it up. So everybody always wants to know how that works. So Canada has, um, we have a terrible, um, dollar right now <laughs> and uh, so if you buy from the United States you're gonna save about 25 to 30 percent it depends on what your bank charges you so it's not me you will still get charged in Canadian dollars but when your either PayPal or your credit card uh, converts it you will save some money so that's kind of a nice little sa savings Yes, she is Andrew, isn't she? I um I miss her. You know, when she was in our I'm in the same um group of of uh, bead store owners that Andrew's in and um Cynthia used to um have her store and she was always around. She's still around a little bit, but she's just doing more sort of art art things. Um she reminds me actually a lot of Candy. She's got that same sort of um very artistic kind of a, a cool sort of vibe to her and I think that's what I liked about her right away Michelle the beads are an 8 aught Mayuki seed bead Andrew are you gonna um, get mad at me if I go over time because <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna get this done in the next <laughs> eight minutes <laughs> I you know it takes me a half an hour to make one at home but I think I started off so slow <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> I don't want to like I don't want to hog the time but um I'm <laughs> I'm definitely running behind here. <laughs> oh, I always wanted to go to her store, Andrew. I really did. I just thought it was the coolest store cuz she had so many um interesting things. Like just so many cool things. Oh, take my time. Oh, whew. Okay, well if you people want to hang around and watch me then that's good. So, um, cause I'm, I'm, you know, three quarters of the way there, but I want to make sure that you, uh, see me finish this and thank you for watching, Andrea. I do appreciate it. No, it wasn't, uh, Andrew's, uh, sister. It's another, another, uh, Cynthia. So thanks, Anne. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, this bracelet is, you know, I always say, oh, it's my favorite, but I, I do have lots of favorites and this is one of them. I think it's just so, um, it's, I always, I like to use the word juxtaposition. I like the juxtaposition of the, like the hard, um, you know, blingy chain and then the leather, it just kind of, I don't know, they sort seem to sort of marry well together. They, they just really worked. Um, the beads on the side kind of softened it up a little bit and um, I love it. Now I do have to say, do not wear this with your favorite sweater and then put your hands behind your back because you'll probably snag it. This chain is notorious for catching on things. So when I do wear my bracelet with this um, chain, I am very, very mindful of the fact that it does catch on stuff. So if I'm putting my hands in my pockets and I've got a sweater on or something, I'm just very careful with that. Oh, I can see I need to push my thing up here. All right. You guys would probably like to see me finish this off, right? Instead of me just telling you how to finish it off. I might have to sacrifice it and, uh, oops, what am I doing here? Okay, go through there. I might have to cut some off and then just finish it off. But I was hoping to have a completed piece to be able to put up on the website. Okay. So it's really easy to get these, you know, see how this one's coming down. So make sure it's always up there on the side. And then I do like to pull them down a little bit and get them sort of centered when I'm tightening them up. And it just ends up with a nicer looking piece. If you're not sort of um, being mindful of where the beads lay, that it will look a little awkward. Now, 
you will end up with some sticky feeling on your fingers and on the top of this bracelet when you're first making it but um, I don't worry about it it eventually just kind of wears away on the bracelet so you won't feel that so oh well thanks Julie all right I will finish it then what else can we talk about today I'm um, I'm not feeling very good at the at this particular moment my uh, this chemo is brutal it's burning like crazy and so I'm I'm very distracted of with the pain <laughs> so I'm trying super hard just to suck it up and um, and deal with it <laughs> but it's very distracting because I want to rub my legs because it's burning in my legs so bad and it's just ugh, it's exasperating but you know things could be worse I suppose right okay so you just keep working away here you're here for the duration awesome I appreciate that I know you guys have put in the long long term today <laughs> so thank you Carrie yeah I'm lucky um, I'm, I'm actually this form of chemo is way less than what um, a lot of people have to go through like this one doesn't I had three days of nausea at the beginning um, and I felt really awful I was just like I actually sat down on the to toilet one morning and started kind of crying I was like I don't think I can do this because I just felt like hell it was awful and uh, then about two days ago I started feeling a little bit more normal again so this is day eight and I do it every day for three weeks and then um, and then I have to go through the effects of it, um, which is going to be the hard part. So um, uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be uh, ugly, <laughs> but you know, at the end of it, it should all be good. So oh, thanks, Michelle. You know, life is just a series of events that are thrown at us, and how we react to these things are. That's the only thing that we can control, right? Is how we react to them. So I could have very easily said to Sarah and Andrea, like, sorry, I got to bow out this time um, because I've got a health issue and I'm not feeling very good right now. Um, Jamie um, Yoshida, she's moving her store and she's like literally in the middle of her move and um, she's still doing it so you know that's what it is in life is I think you just you just carry on I always say carry on as if you were normal um, <laughs> just do the best you can and um, I, I, I I'm trying to let go of my perfectionism and um, I was getting pretty flustered at the beginning of this because I'm not feeling very well and I'm trying to make it perfect and then I just kinda had to take a big, big breath there and just go okay this will be fine it'll all work and it's going fine now so I really just think that's what life is about is just taking it one day at a time and you know there's always you can something even worse can happen I suppose right so I feel lucky that um, that they caught everything before it turned into a, a full-blown nightmare which is good and uh, so I'm really grateful that I have a good doctor who's taking care of me and uh, that scared the hell out of me and <laughs> told me how awful this is gonna be <laughs> oh my gosh yeah she would she did not mince words <laughs> she's like this isn't gonna be fun I'm like great <laughs> thank you for that okay so and it was funny because I had to go to the hospital yesterday and um, in Vancouver and it, it's about an hour away but in rush hour it's gonna probably be like closer to two and it was raining and I didn't want to deal with it so I spent the night in a hotel downtown Vancouver right in it's a, a beautiful hotel across the street from um, one of the old hotels we have or sorry old hospitals we have and um, it was so weird being in a hotel for the first time in a year because we had we've been we're not on lockdown here but um, you know they they don't really want us traveling or anything so there has been no movement or doing anything for since the last time I went anywhere was last year and I went to Tucson so it was very weird staying in a hotel and one whole tower of the hotel was um, shut down 
and um, it's just very weird right now. So, but it was really nice. Um, my husband kept saying, well, 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 what time do you want me to join you? And I'm like, I don't. <laughs> I just wanted to be by myself. Is there anything wrong with that? <laughs> uh, yeah, Terry, it was. It was very strange to be in a hotel, but I do have to say I really enjoyed it. They had the most comfortable bed and really great pillows. Um, the TV sucked, so I didn't watch TV. I just, you know, was on my phone and um, I went to bed early. But the best part of it was, um, well, it's not the best part, but <laughs> I, I, I sort of, I say I got dinner and a show because <laughs> the couple next to me in, in the room next to me were having a full blown domestic and the salty language that was coming out of their mouth. I mean, I grabbed my popcorn and I was... <laughs> I was listening to every word they said. Are you out of here, Theo? All right, have a good weekend. One of my staff is just leaving, so. Um, yeah, so I actually was really concerned because they were getting pretty, pretty feisty. And um, they were yelling and screaming and swearing. And then in the morning when I saw a couple going to the elevator, I, all I could think was, I wonder if it was them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It was kind of weird. <laughs> very, very weird. But, you know, they calmed. And it, it was weird because they were fighting like cats and dogs, like really, really crazy. And then they stopped. And so I thought, well, did the, somebody kill someone? <laughs> but, uh, you know, usually it's the men that can be the, the big sweary guys. <laughs> but it was her. I mean, he was swearing too. He was like the F-bombing like crazy. But she was calling in some names that even I don't say. <laughs> and I used to work in a jail, so I know all the words. <laughs> and she was like dropping it. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. <laughs> I feel bad for people though that have that kind of a relationship. I'm very lucky I don't. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what happened, Kathy. I think all that screaming, they were getting, uh, they were tired. But who goes to a hotel and fights? Like, what the heck? Okay, so now when you get down here and you've got to start adjusting, it can be a little awkward. So um, let's see how we're doing here. Sometimes what I do is I take this clip off and I put it on the opposite one and that'll give me an extra inch or so. So I just open that up, put it through the end, bring it up here and that will, yeah, there we go. Okay, how are we doing? Well, I'm already like running over time, but you guys are okay with this, right? So, and Andrew won't um, fire me, so. <laughs> yes, yes, Sue, I know all the bad words. <laughs> Actually, I used to work in a hospital years ago, um, and that's where I learned how to swear, because <laughs> I think nurses are the worst. <laughs> and my mom was a nurse, and my dad was a police officer, so. <laughs> always lots of swearing going on in my world oh goodness that's you know if you don't swear that's cool if you do swear that's cool I never care what people do there's some words I don't like but um, you know I don't like ones that are derogatory to women but other than that you know whatever <laughs> okay we are getting there people I really thank you for your patience and thank you to the um, timing gods that are allowing me the extra the um, the extra time to get this done I did not think it was going to take me this long because I timed myself the other day <laughs> I'm not doing so good with the timing am I and I'm trying so hard to just get this done Okay, hopefully you guys are not needing like specific instruction anymore because I'm just repeating myself 38 times. Um, so if you just are sort of tuning in and you're wondering what in the heck I'm doing, watch this back on the replay and you can see what I, how I'm actually doing these um, square knots because if I told you how I was doing it each time, you guys would all be like falling asleep. Yes, I am thankfully the last person, so I'm not cutting into anybody else's time. So that's really good. All right. We are almost, almost there. I can taste it. It's almost there. Oh, and speaking of tasting, my husband's cooking tonight. Isn't that exciting? I love it when he cooks. 
he, he's not really a, what I would call a great cook. Sorry, honey, you're not. But um, <laughs> I just like it when I don't have to. And he's making a really delicious meal tonight, too. So I'm stoked. He's making, he makes this sriracha chicken. He has about three things that he makes. But this one is good. <laughs> no, Janine, I didn't. And that's probably what I needed to be doing. It's probably added an extra 10 minutes on because I was futzing around at the beginning. But we're good. If I was, if there was somebody coming on behind me, I would have just um, sacrificed this one and just shown you how to finish it off. But seeing how everybody really wanted me to just keep on going, uh, that's what I'm doing. So now that it's getting a little awkward at the end here because um, it's not as tight, but I mostly macrame in my hand anyway. I find that um, it's easier for me, but for demo purposes, of course, we have to tie it down so you can see what's going on so mmm barbecue pork sandwiches that sounds yummy mmm I'm starving <laughs> Sue yes um, I'm always worried my both of my kids swear like truckers and um, th both the little ones because I've got two two grandbabies that are three and um, neither of them, well, Willow, I've never heard her swear. She says, oh my gosh, all the time now. That's her big thing. She always says, oh my gosh. Um, and Grace did pop an F-bomb off once, apparently. Um, but they told her that that was a grown-up word that she couldn't say. So they said that she was allowed one swear word. And so they said it was like something like, oh my gosh. So to her, that's like something that, you know, is naughty to say. <laughs> so... I do worry about the grandkids, but oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, thank you, Allie. It, I, this is, of course, my favorite color combination too. I'm you. This is if you're wondering what color this is. This is the um, antique gray, so not the metallic one. Oh, and s having said that, now if you um, are using your own leathers, I would s probably stay away from anything metallic because they're very, they've got a lot of slip to them. And you may find that you have um, problems with the slip in, uh, slip on there because everything just moves around too much. So I tend to use all of these antique colors a lot. You'll, I, I never use anything but in my demos because I don't, I don't actually like those leathers that slip like that. So, um, or that have those, you know, shiny finishes. So I tend to use these more vintage colors and um, I just find that they, I don't know, they just, they perform a little better. So sometimes when people will send me pictures of something they've made with barrel knots or whatever and it's not working, I often will see that it's with the shiny leathers and that's often what the problem is, is that it's shiny. So um, that's just a little, a little tip that if you use these more vintage colors um, or antique colors, whatever they call them, <clears throat> excuse me, they will work a little better. Sorry, I have to have a short slurp. <laughs> okay, Diane, that you win the comment of the day. <laughs> I would have, I probably would have peed myself if I had been there. Oh my god, that is cute. I mean, we shouldn't laugh when little swear, but <laughs> sometimes you just can't help but laugh because they just they don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> oh, Willow comes up with the funniest stuff. She, we had her. Um, was it last weekend? Yeah, we we had her. Well, we we get her pretty much every other weekend. But um, she <laughs> she was doing something and. Um, I my husband said something and she shushed him and and he was recording when she did that so we have this recording of her shushing him and then she shushed me and I started laughing so hard because I'm like oh my gosh she just shushed us <laughs> okay so I'm finally on the last one here let me get rid of some of this tape and move this up okay so the last one I'm going to pull up my final beads and it looks like I have extra beads on um, so I think I probably should have put the pulled the beads up at the beginning there. So my bad. 
But again, nobody's ever going to notice if you screw up, right? Because nobody should be that close to your wrist. And if they are, well, you're lucky. <laughs> okay, so I am going to end here. I'm going to do my final square knot on there. Okay, so now I've got all of that on there. So now I want to finish the way I started with two more square knots. So now I'm just going to go over, do my P, and then come up through the hole. And my fingers are so sticky now from working with this Irish wax linen for so long that um, it's getting hard to hold on to anything. Okay. So now is the place. So if you were making this larger, you could, um, like in this one here, you could add extra, um, you could add the extra ones on there to add some length or add bar extra barrel knots. So there's lots of different things that you can do. So there's one full square knot. So I'm going to add one more. And it looks like I need it just a couple more minutes and then I will finish up and then tell you the few little deals and um, then we're good to go. And then you guys can have the rest of your evening. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull this off of here. Okay, so now you can see how pretty that looks. This is the, um, the olivine one if you're looking at a kit. Okay, so now what I want to do is I am going to turn this over. I'm just going to get rid of this tray somewhere. I have to find a home for it. And get my little bead mat back. Okay, almost done. Thank you for everybody's patience. So I'm going to turn this over so that I'm on the back side and I am going to tie a knot here. So I'm going to do like a, a, a um, surgeon's knot. So I just wrap it around once and then bring it again. Um, so it goes through like twice there, right? And I'm just going to pull that tight. Now you have to be careful with Irish wax linen because it will sometimes catch. It'll like get your, your, your knot will go in the wrong place. So there we go. Just pull that nice and tight. And then I'm going to do that one more time. I bet, Carla, I can't even imagine being a teacher. Good Lord. Okay, so do two, that, two of them, two surgeon's knots. It's hard to try to do these on camera, turning this over, talking. All right, so I do want to pull that really tight. Okay, so now, again, I need scissors, right? But I never have them, so I'm just going to use my cutters. So I want to make sure that I'm only trimming the Irish wax linen. And then you can kind of just, if that's got like a little, that's got like a little um, knotted bump there, you can kind of push that down. But the other thing that we can do now is we are going to tie a barrel knot. So now you can see we've got all this extra here, which is good. So I'm going to place my barrel knot tube in between and I'm going to wrap once, twice, three times working towards my left hand. And I'm going to put this through the back end. Always go through the back end, not the front end hold on to that knot, pull the tube out, and pull that down. Now what I want to do is I'm going to push that up so that it's sitting right on top of that last little knot. And that will help so that you don't have any um, pokey pieces because when you um, knot that Irish wax linen, it gets a little hard and it can leave a bit of a, a bump right there. So we're just covering up that last knot there. Okay, so you want to pull that fairly tight. Oh, you can't see? Am I in, not in frame? I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, let's see. Move up. I'm just going to see now if I'm up. All right, what's going on here? Is my camera not? Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm sorry. I was completely, um, my back starting to trash out here, so I was leaning. Um, so all I've done is a barrel knot, and I've done it right on top. Um, of the end there so that it's kind of you know covering that um, the knots up. So now what I need to do is make another knot that will accommodate the size of the button. So I want to um, sort of just you know mentally mark that and I'm going to make sure that I'm wrapping with my long one here and again I'm going to put that at the top take my barrel knot tube and place that in between and now I'm going to wrap three times around working towards my left hand and now I hold on to that knot, take the end, come through the back end, 
That's where most people struggle is they put it through the wrong end and then they end up with this extra little loop. So pull that out. And I've got a lot of leather here, but the reason that you have so much leather is if you need to add extra barrel knots like this one, okay? So now you can see I'm way far down there. So what I'm gonna do is just push this down a little bit. And before I tighten it up, I always make sure that I can get my button through there, which I can. And then now I'm going to grab this again and tighten that up. So I just put my thumb nail right where I want it to stay and then I push that against it and that gives it um, a, nice, a nice place to land. Okay, so now we're going to trim, trim, and um, okay, so I am 15 minutes over. Whew, goodness gracious. And then, okay, my glue's got a thing on it, so let's just pretend that I'm gluing. Um, maybe it'll come out. So I'm going to glue, oh, sorry, I'm sticking here. Right here and right here. I wanna put a good amount of glue because this is where your bracelet's going to take the most punishment. And then I'm going to put some right there and my it's not working, but I'm gonna put a bunch here. And so just make sure you put it right where that little cross is and then some there and some there. And then we're, we're done on that. So I'm just gonna quickly show you the three colors I've got. I do have a fourth color, I just don't have it made up. It's got the colors of the um, beads on the website. So this is the um, Olivine Picasso that I made today. And then I've got the saffron. So the Olivine Picasso comes with uh, the antique bronze colors and the um, the antique gray and then our olivine and so that's that one. And then we have the saffron which is with the copper. So this has a beautiful saffron. It's my favorite one. It's got bits of blue and you know, it's a gorgeous color. And then this one is the cobalt blue with gold. And then I, it, you, you won't get this charm, but I just added that to show you how you can, you can finish it off a little differently by adding a couple barrel knots. And then I just took a big jump ring and sandwiched that in between there. So that gives you an extra option of how to finish it off if you want to do something a little bit different, okay? So that one is the cobalt blue, and then there's also a seafoam green, and I can, and that one comes with the silver, antique silver um, stuff. So, okay, so that is the project, and I will make sure to post that one on um, YouTube. So here's your coupon. So um, you'll save 20% off your order until March 22nd. Just use the coupon code SPRINGFLING, all in capitals, and, um, it's not valid on kits or tools. Just make sure that you guys can see that. So we have that. And then don't forget, if you do place an order or for anybody that did already place an order for one of the kits, you'll go into a draw. Um, and just make sure when you're ordering that you put in the comment section um, GBE so that I know that you watch the um, the presentation. And um, then you will go into the draw for, for two $25, um, there's kind of like a gift certificate. It'll just be a, a credit or whatever. I, I, I have to figure something out on my website. Um, but we're gonna do two draws for that. And that's about it. So um, I'm not gonna pull my camera out and do all the ridiculousness of moving it backwards and, and everything. I'm just going to go like this and say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> I wanna thank everybody for um, joining all of us today. Uh, we are so, so grateful to have this fabulous community of everybody. And um, I, I wanna thank you so much for all of your prayers today for me. Um, I'm doing okay, so I'm hanging in there. I, I really appreciate all the love and thank you so much for all of the orders. Um, I was saying to my staff today that um, I'm so grateful because uh, it's so bad in the store that uh, if I didn't have my online business right now, I would have to close my store. That's how bad it is. It's very, very quiet and it's um, it's horrifying as a business owner to be in this uh, this position. So I am so grateful that I still get to do what I love and I get to share with you what I absolutely love to do. Um, and it's because of you guys that I get to do this. So thank you again for um, all of all all that you do and all your support. So tomorrow morning, I believe at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or 11 Eastern, you will have Abby Berta up and she's got a really great um, bracelet project. 
uh, and Abby's always lots of fun. So she'll kick off the day and it'll just keep going all day. So you guys have another great day of uh, viewing tomorrow. So thank you so much for hanging in there for the little extra time here with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, thanks for all the, the love and the hearts and um, make sure to join me on my um, on the Facebook page, the, the Kelly's Beads, Beads and Blab group if you want to show off some of your wares or ask questions or uh, sometimes I'll slip special deals in there, all kinds of things. So go to the, uh, our other Facebook page. So there's the Kelly's Bead Boutique page, but then there's the Kelly's Beads and Blab. Also, you can watch me on YouTube. Um, when life is normal, I do a video every Monday, but right now with what's going on, I'm not doing all the videos, but um, I'll get back to it. I may throw one out right away, you never know. Um, so that's about it. So thanks again. Have a really fabulous evening and we will see you guys around, I'm sure. So take care and thanks everybody. Love you guys.